Hey, I'm Jamie from Stillmeyer Games, and I have a little solo gaming story here today about Escape the Dark Castle. I was at a friend's game night on uh, Sunday, this past weekend sometime, and there were a few kids in the house at the time. So we had maybe 12 adults and three kids, and pretty much everybody was hanging out on the ground floor. And uh, there was one group on the second floor, and it was pretty loud. It was really loud, louder than I would like, largely due to the kids. The kids were being pretty loud. And so at one point I went to the second floor and there was a little group playing a longer Euro game there. And one of them suggested, I mentioned that I was kind of escaping with the kids a little bit. And one of them mentioned that, uh, that they had brought a solo game or a game that could be played solo called Escape the Dark Castle. It looks like this. I'll talk about the mechanisms in a second. And they said, you know, if you want to, you go up to the third floor. This house has third floor, three floors of gaming. Go up to the third floor, take the game, just go quietly play a game for a little bit, have some quiet time. And I usually don't play solo games, but at that moment, I was like, there is nothing that I want more in this world than to be in a quiet space away from the loudness, craziness of this room that was, uh, you know, it, the kids were being really loud. And I wanted to get away from that. So I took this game up to the, the third floor. This is so uncharacteristic of me because I was at a kind of a gathering, a big gaming gathering. I kind of just went away from everything and for 30 beautifully calm minutes, except for when the kids made it up to the third floor briefly and I had to send them back down, um, I got to play this game solo and I had a lot of fun with it. It is a relatively simple game. It's kind of a choose your own adventure game where you have a character and that character has a unique die associated with it. I don't have any examples here because you also have these general um, kind of story dice, I think they're called. And uh, some of the cards... Some of the cards, you flip, you're kind of flipping through the storybook of 15 random cards and there's a boss at the end. And some of the cards just give you a choice and you make a choice based on uh, items you have, how much health you want to lose or not. You're trying, not to, you're trying to not to be reduced to zero life. But many of the cards are combat cards with very streamlined mechanisms. And the mechanism I want to talk about today is this combat system because it's a super system, super simple system that has so much customization based on and creativity based on what they've done here. So basically the ba most basic version of combat, let's see if I have one of those. Yeah, so this is a, probably the most basic version of combat, this card up here. So it has some icons at the very base of the card that show you some black dice, some story dice that you need to place right in front of that character. And to, to win com combat, you need to remove those dice. So there were a few specific icons, and then on many of these cards, there's a single kind of icon that says, that means number of characters. That means you take these dice and you roll that X number of dice where X is the number of players. I, I was playing solo, and so I actually had two characters that I was playing, and so I had to roll two dice. So this is, for this character, they had two dice, and then X number of players roll two more dice. There are three icons on these dice. What I need to do on my turn is, is to remove those dice. So my characters generally act first. I get to roll the die, one, one die for each of those characters. And then if the icon matches, I get to remove the, uh, the matching icon. And when I remove all these dice, the, uh, the dice go away. And if I don't remove them, if this bad guy remains alive, um, they have a little damage icon. I saw the number two a lot. I think many of them deal two damage. Where each character is dealt damage, unless they were able to block this sounds complicated a little bit as I'm describing it, but really, it's very streamlined. Have some dice, you roll your dice, see if the icons match. If the character survives, they deal some damage, unless your die, and again, I don't have an example here, but the, the character dice, some of them, some of the faces have a shield on it, and that means that they not only deal damage, but they also get the block damage as well, which feels good. So very simple, streamlined, fast. It's easy to set up. It's easy to execute. There's nice tension to it. But the variety that, that emerges from this simple system is so impressive because that's like the most basic version, right? Um, then here's an example. Here's a monster right here. This monster gave us a choice. It said as a group, uh, we can surround the beast and attack from all sides with a much simpler combat. So only one icon plus one die per, uh, per player. But if we don't succeed, if we get a little unlucky and we don't succeed, the monster is going to deal three damage to each of us. Or we can choose a route that requires a lot more dice. Three times as many standard dice then plus the player dice. But the monster will only deal us two damage if we do it that way. So it's this tempting decision. Do we try to finish off the monster right away, but they're going to deal us more damage or not? That's just one example. Then there's... Um, these cards, I, I just lined up a bunch of different dice uh, uh, cards here that can come out because these are both different in terms of the icons. The icons don't make combat feel all that much different unless there's a lot of them. But each of them have a combat special. So I can't read all of them here, but let's see. Combat special, you are terrified and any might that you roll, a specific icon, 
will uh, will have no effect. So might has no effect. Um, combat special, wh whoever deals the final blow loses one hit point. Might say two hit points, very small text here, as the demon vanishes in a burst of flame which cannot be blocked. And combat special, whenever you would remove a chapter die by hitting this enemy, chapter die, they're called chapter dice, not story dice, roll it instead. So roll, if the result is wisdom, do not remove it. Put it back, wisdom dice, wisdom side up. So interesting. I mean, that's just a small sample of the combat. By, by adding these very simple rules that are on the cards themselves, it adds a huge variety of combat. And in addition to that, there's a boss at the end that has, has even a slightly more complex system. So like, I played this boss, this, uh, this sorcerer's boss that had me line up this row of dice that I needed to break through their minions before I could remove any of these dice. It's incredible. I was so impressed. Like card after card, I was like, oh, wow, that's so cool they did that. And then, oh, wow, that's so cool they did that. There's all these little tweaks, these little changes without adding all the complexity you see in these giant dungeon crawlers where you have to memorize 10 pages of rules to understand combat. I know those can be satisfying in some way, but, but I literally sat down and started playing this game and went through a whole game in about 30 minutes by myself and had a ton of fun. Um, so yeah, I'd love to hear your solo story. If, you've, if you're not a solo player and you've ever played a game solo, what were the circumstances that inspired you to try it, on the tabletop specifically? Um, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on a simple combat system that has lots of small tweaks to make each monster feel unique. I wouldn't say each one was particularly memorable. Um, I can recount a little bit, like the, the final boss was memorable. I don't know if any of these were particularly memorable, but they all felt unique in a small, small way that made a big difference. And I really appreciate the, the thought that went into each of them. So yeah, let me know if you can think of any other games that do that. Simple, streamlined combat systems that have small tweaks to make different characters feel unique. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And also, if you've played Escape, have I even mentioned the name of the game? Escape the Dark Castle? That's the name of the game. I, th I think there's also a sci-fi version called Escape the Dark Sector that, uh, that has a sci-fi twist on this theme. Yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks.